Okay, this is Rocky Hall, and today is July 2017, and I'm here with Robert. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, letters to our guys inside, to the guys that have been convicted and they're doing time, and how valuable letters are to these guys. So I'm just going to let Robert just kind of wing it. He's got a little bit to say here. So go ahead, Robert. Hi, my name is Robert. Um, I uh, did five years in Folsom. Mm -hmm from 19 to 24. I've been out for seven years now, um, doing really good, working really hard. Um, and the most important part about letters is the connection that you get from the outside. You know, the best part of my day every day was walking down to that mail list to see if I got mail. And even the five minutes that it took me to walk down there, there was a chance that I was getting mail and it brightened my spirits. And so, you know, it's really important, you know, you're in, you're in that place fighting for your life, you know, literally and figuratively sometimes, and that little walk, even if you don't get mail, is great, and when you don't get mail, it is what it is, but when you do, it's, it's just, you know, a feeling that's undescribable, you know, the most important part about that day is that mail, and it makes that day go by better. You know, like, all we got is time in there, and so, you know, we'll read that letter and reread that letter and reread that letter <laughs> and write the letter to respond to it and write the letter to respond to it again because we didn't like the way it sounded. You know, it's just important. Even if it's only three lines, hello, I love you, thinking about you, here's a couple pictures, didn't have much time today, but I wanted to get something out to you. It's important, you know. And So the content's really not as as valuable per se as just getting the letter itself, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't it doesn't matter what it says, you know, you can you know, you can be complaining about everything that's going wrong that day. You know, you can vent to us while we're in there because we don't got nothing else to do but listen to it and we'll enjoy it you know so like okay guys now ladies i want to say he just said that he was going to listen to you vent and would enjoy it yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, so i'm uh, sorry robert go ahead yeah. you know it's 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 really really important you know it doesn't matter what it says you can you know just start the conversation off with what was bothering you that day or what went good that day or what you're watching for TV and what you made for dinner it, it really doesn't matter because to be honest the letter you're going to get back from us is going to be boring because there's nothing happening in there there's nothing going on so we're going to talk about the same thing over and over and over wishes and whatnots and what ifs and what could have been and what we want to happen you know we don't have any real conversation we're just going to talk back so it doesn't matter what you say it's all about that connection and the feeling that it, we get from the letters what uh, i'm, I'm going to touch on the food issue uh i've had a lot of guys tell me that they really liked hearing what you had for dinner <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's you know just anything got to say i you know i I don't know. You can say all kinds of things. It doesn't matter. Just, you know, talk about your day a little bit. Who did you want to write to you? Um, everybody. Like, it, it, you know, my moms, my brothers, my sisters. Friends, friends family. Friends, family, girls. But, you know, like me personally, I, I kind of left the girls to the side because it doesn't make things better sometimes sometimes it makes things worse if you're expecting a letter and you don't get it and you think something else is happening is there's nothing that you can do to control any situation in there and so it doesn't it doesn't help so me personally i just left the girls alone but you know every guy's different a lot of guys that's all they think about you know they write four or five different girls at one time that way they make sure they get four or five letters a week right you know right and the other part is the mail system in there like it can take up to three weeks for him to get that letter from you for the simple fact that they're sorting it and they're reviewing it and they're going over it and depending on the guy's situation if they don't like him they'll keep it for even longer in the back or they put it under a different section that gets reviewed by gang task force or special specialized people that know how to review 
the mail better so then it takes even longer if they're in ag seg it can take an extra week because you know they kind of get put in the back or whatever you know they're not as important because they're in trouble or whatever you know they want to say they are you know so it's important even if you haven't got one back from the last one just to keep putting them out there you know pictures um everything you know it, it doesn't matter what it is even if it's three lines and three pictures they'll be happy you know what I mean? If you could get out three letters a week that were only half pages instead of one letter a week that was two pages, I'd be more happy with that than right. Than a, you know. And what book. kind of what kind of pictures? Just anything. 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 Everything. Everything. The scenery, the family, friends, you know, everything. Dogs. It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> matter. You know, like whatever is important to that person. They like cars. They like. You know, Horses, whatever, whatever trucks. their hobby was before, you know, like, you know, magazines, all of that stuff. Touch you know. on that about sending in magazines and books, if you don't mind. Well, there's a, you know, like you can do do it through Amazon and it's, um, you pay with your credit card and then it gets shipped from Amazon to the prison. So they allow the book to come in and, you know, you can send them self-help books or whatever they're into reading. I read two books every two days. You know, so like nothing but time. You know, I, I didn't like the TV, so when I wasn't working out or at work or mm -hmm. at school, I was on my bunk reading. You know. Yep. And so, it's it's important. You know, and magazines. I mean, they're a time killer, and you can cut them up and do things with them, and you know, like it's it's just important. You know, and always send a couple extra pieces of paper. Always oh yeah, yeah, stamp. yeah. Well, in you the know. federal, I noticed when I sent a stamp, they sent the whole letter back. So I guess in the federal prison, you're not allowed to send that. But in the state system, uh, the state of California, yeah, send an extra stamp, two yeah. or three. Yeah. Go ahead. Paper stamps. Paper stamps. You know, um, try to avoid putting perfume on them because then they like to send them back. Um, no kiss, you know, kissing the letters. They sometimes screen it for that, you know, like. Um, Go, do you mind telling these guys why? Uh, it's like for drugs and, you know, because people will uh, soak the letter in a drug and then send it in and then the people will suck on the paper and get high. Right. So, like, it's a contraband type thing and they're just trying to prevent more drugs being introduced you know well and when guys get high I mean I know that you've seen it and I've seen it uh, bad things happen yeah uh, rapes violence murders I mean it goes from all the way to rape to murder to just you know the guy could die from an overdose or anything yeah. like that it's, so it's 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 never good and then people owe money and that's how you know you go on lockdown because this guy owes this guy and then there's one race fighting another race and right. and then everybody's eating <laughs> cold food again so. right <laughs> and i mean and and it goes back to the drugs and so you know that's why you can't do what he just said to the letters and stuff like that because they have to control the drugs and everything else um you touched on the mailroom and the staff and stuff like that and the procedures for getting the mail in and I, I definitely wanted to touch on that because sometimes it can take longer than a lot of people a lot of people like so uh, do you have any advice to the women if it was your daughter writing a letter inside what would you say to her um, keep it simple just keep talking don't get too serious until you know I mean, unless you knew him before, don't be serious until he comes out because um, the biggest thing I learned in there is people are not the same in there as they are out here, you know, and, and you will find out that they're not the same in there either, but it usually takes two or three years before you realize it. Yeah. Um, and when you got the time, you know, all you do is pay attention to how people are. Um, so just keep it light. Don't, you know, don't expect too much and just try to be there for him as much as you can um, and, and it's all about helping the next guy out it's about being there for another human being it doesn't have to be about a relationship or or anything more than that it's just about right um, extending a hand because a lot of these guys don't 
deserve to be shunned forever for what they did, you know, like, right. uh, I'm part of the 15 or 20 percent or whatever it is that gets out and has never went back, you know, I'm getting ready to celebrate my seven year anniversary with no jail time, no dirty test, no parole, no... No parole violations, no dirty tests, nothing, nothing. You know, and, nothing. Um, I haven't even got a drunk in public. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, He's so, a better guy than I am. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, not everybody's a bad guy in there. There are a lot of bad people, but not everybody. Right. Um, it, well, this went really fast. I'm really surprised. We covered absolutely everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, what would you like to say to the American people about life, America, doing time? Um. Everyone needs to start working harder and stop expecting everything to be given to them. And America will be great again. <laughs> the entitlement crowd. Yes. How old are you? Do you mind I'm me 31. asking? 31. 31. And he's telling you guys to get off your butt and work because you're not entitled. You know, so he is the, the XYZ generation and, and I'm his grandmother. So <laughs> I'm old enough to yeah. be your mother, young man. Yeah. <laughs> You want to, since this is really short, you want to talk about the COs inside because you know that I did 20 years and, and, uh, um, you know, I had a lot of different experiences with them. Some of them are there for their paychecks. Some of them are there to prove a point. Some of them are there because they couldn't be cops. So then they come in there to be cops. Some of them, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of in their training. So some of the guys are really weak minded and are trained and taught to see how bad we are and don't get me wrong there's a lot of bad in prison you know I can only imagine what all these guys see every day you know but not everybody's like that not everybody's just a you know and uh, the biggest thing living in this small town that we live in with two prisons is you see a lot of correctional officers walking around and I've got a lot of prison ink and so like right I just get the up you know I just get a really you know, they stick their noses up to me still, and it's just, you know, uh, there's a lot of good ones, and there's a lot of bad ones, and then there's a lot of guys that are just there to do their job, not trying to do no extra, don't put me in a position to make me do my job, and I won't put you in the hole. Right. Basically, you know, <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's a human nature, you know, there's a lot of good people and bad people everywhere, you know, and they're just doing their job, you know, a lot of people don't like them and hate them, and yeah, yeah, there's some of them that need to be hated because they go out of their way to make you miserable. You know, when they come in and yep. rip your mattresses up and, you know, leave you a pile of all your clothes and everything that you own in a pile uh, covered in whatever you were drinking because they wanted to make sure there wasn't nothing in the bottom of the cup uh, and then laugh about it when they walk out and let you back in because they didn't find nothing and how did you get your house. how did you get through that i mean what what got you through that um working out going to work every day going to school reading a book you know um when you're in there you're either you're either kind of a part of something depend it all depends on who you are and where you come from you know, if you're not from anywhere, don't know nobody, you can walk, you know, and you find a celly like you, you can walk the straight and narrow and, uh, you know, but realistically, if you're that guy, you have to have somebody on the outside taking care of you. If you're not that guy, you, you know, you got to do what you got to do in there to survive. You know? Right. And so whether it's making cards or tattooing or, you know, and, you know, some of the things are against the rules. So a lot of people don't like the cops because, you know, they're there because of cops and they're getting busted there because of cops. You know, getting time taken away for a $2 cigarette, you know, it's... Right, right. Uh, it's it's all kind of petty and it's all kind of funny and, and I kind of just uh, knew I was getting out, you know. I was mad for the first two years I was in prison and then me and a lifer got in a fist fight because I was just mad all the time and he was tired of my attitude. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I know the scenario. And uh, I changed my mind, you know. Right. He, he took me under his wing. We went and worked out together every day, played cards together. When I got mad, he'd tell me to shut up, you know. And uh, Right. It, it, it changed my outlook on things. And then about my fourth year, prison completely changed my outlook on life. Wow. You know, some people go there and 
learn that you know new all skill they got, sets. All they have is crime to go back to. They knew you know, they learn new skill sets of crime, uh, uh, better ways to do it, more you know, ways to do I, it. I went there and realized that this isn't for me. Right. You know, I mean, I already had trade. No, I'm an electrician, and uh, I can do a little bit of everything else. You know, so I knew how to do all that before I went there. You know, I just made some bad choices. You know, so when I got out, I just went back to work. You know, it's all it's and it's a boring life. You lead that fast life and doing fun stuff all the time, and then you go to prison, and you're really bored. And then you get out, and, and you want to have fun again, but you know you got to go to work, and you get a couple days of the week that you get to go party or whatever you do, or go fishing or camping. But you, you know, do it in a more reasonable, yeah, grown-up you, you type work, way. You work to get to those points. You work your butt off so you can have that week off, or you can have the three-day festival, or whatever right. you do, you know, and... And uh, you don't just get it every single day because that's not life. It's not life. You know. Yeah. So you're just being a grown up. Yeah. <laughs> it it kind of stinks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm so done being a grown it's up. It's way harder than anything else. Right. So. Uh, well, I appreciate this. I finally got somebody to get in front of uh, the camera, and I want to I want to thank you because I know a couple people that have done some time and. And nobody wants to uh, nobody wants to do this, but I think this is really going to help. Um, what I'm doing is I and I'm putting this out to the the PNP. It's the it's the group that we have to write to the uh, political prisoners that we have in the federal system, and the and the trials are going on in Las Vegas right now. And I wanted to let you guys know the importance of writing a letter. And it and it, like he said, coming from the horse's mouth here. It doesn't matter what you write, just complain because he said it, he's happy to hear you gripe. <laughs> and that's coming from a guy. So uh, that's what this is all about. And I just want to thank you, Robert. Thank you for your time. And this is Rocky. Absolutely. I hope it helps somebody. I, I really do. I really hope this uh, gets some letters out and, and, and gets people a little bit motivated to do that. Okay. Anything else? Mm -mm. Good. Okay. Rocky out.